Hello again, Tubal Kane here, your internet shop teacher, and I'm starting a, this will be a lengthy video, and it's pseudo-scientific, I am not a metrologist, but the gist of this entire video is to check the rigidity of six or seven different brands and styles of magnetic indicator holders. So if you wondered uh, which is the best and what should I buy and how sturdy are they, this may be helpful, but at the very least, if not less, you might find it interesting or mildly educational or just plain, I hope, a little bit entertaining. So let me show you what I'm going to do and the general setup here. I spent quite a bit of time setting this up, matter of fact, hours and thinking about it, but uh, let's get started and see what happens here. If there's any conclusions, again, these are not scientific conclusions by any means, so let's go. Let me first show you the setup. Now I'm using the Bridgeport milling machine for this purpose because I'm not going to run it. It's just that it's an excellent iron table that uh, the magnets will hold to real well and a perfect place to set this up. Now right behind it here the indicators are pressing against a half inch thick cast aluminum ground plate. Actually it's a match plate so that's pretty rigid. Not that we're going to be putting any pressure against it. So that's the way this setup is and there are seven indicators. Different types of bases. Lots of different types of indicators. This is irrelevant. There's Sterrett, there's Mitutoyu, there's no names, there's a central. And, you know, I even have a lot more plus in the drawer, but, you know, i got to stop someplace. And uh, it serves no purpose, I suppose, to use any of the other ones. Uh, I'm not using test indicators. I'm using plunger-type dial indicators. Let me introduce them, if I may. This is a Noga articulated type. It's their middle size one with the adjustment down here. It's everyone's favorite. This one is a central instruments. It's a rather nice one and I do very much like this vertical post type. I consider them to be rigid but we'll see. This little beauty here is really an old one. It's an Enco Mighty Might I think they call it. And the magnet on it is not all that good compared to the more modern magnets. This is probably 50 or 60 years old. This little one I just added at the last minute. It's a foreign made, small magnet, minimum range. That's why it's moved way up. The other ones are all about the same distance away from the edge of the table. And continuing, continuing down the line here we have a Sterrett. This is the push button type. Again, it's the, the rigid. But notice that sometimes with the rigid one that's a 3 8 post or more, but we have a more slender post going into the work. These I never had any use for. As a matter of fact, I pieced it to be together because I threw one of those away years ago. And we're going to see what happens there. I'll apologize if it's a good one. And I think that the actual, actual uh, segmented iron, whatever you call here, is made by Flexbar. Matter of fact, I don't think I saw the name on there. Flexbar, Flexbar. This is one of my favorites. No name. I suppose it's from China, but I very much like it. And I use both this one and the Noga all the time for camera mounts, as I think many other creators do as well. Do you know what? I have a terrible problem with contrast and glares and everything using dial indicators and we've talked about that before. If any of you have any idea, someone once told me to use a certain type of cellophane over these and it will cut the glare but I, I forgot what that is. If we look at it from this direction again there's the aluminum plate and most all of the indicators are about the same distance up from the milling machine table which is approximately 10 inches but they're not all exactly the same. All the indicators are loaded. Every one of these indicator bases is tightened as much as I could. So some of these I even tightened with pliers. 
As tightly as I thought I had this plate mounted, when I wiggle it here just a little bit with my fingers you'll see there is a deflection, but that doesn't really matter, but I know somebody's going to pick away at that, but it, you know it's pretty rigid and the only pressure we have against it is the plungers, the springs and the plunger, so that will remain pretty much the same. And I tried to set these all at about zero and it's irrelevant where the needles are placed as long as I've got them on zero. Remember as you watch this you're going to have some uh, error here in looking at uh, at the angle, of, what do we call that? Uh, oh jeepers. Alrighty here is my methodology and I thought about pulling on the indicators with a small spring scale and various other possibilities but what I'm going to do at least to start with here I'm going to take these Welch scientific weights there's a 200 gram a 500 gram and then I'm going to graduate to the thousand gram which of course is a kilogram is it not and I put a little bit of foam on the bottom of them so that I won't damage uh, the dial. I know somebody's going to say, don't set that on a dial. You know, the criticism. They look for things. They look for things. All right. Let's go over and do that one at a time. And we're going to zero in on the indicator dials to see how much deflection there is to start with 200 grams, which isn't a whole lot. I numbered them so if in the comments you want to make a reference you can use the numbers and I'm going from right to left kind of backwards but the Noga is number one, the Central is number two, the Enco Tiny Titan I think is what that's called is number three and then that little foreign made one is number four, the Sterrett is five, let's call that the Flex Bar is six, and again, I don't know what this is called, but it's made in a country that's toward the east. I also took the liberty of numbering them up here on the plate. 200 grams on the Noga. Let's see what happens. It looks like it moved imperceptibly, perhaps one-fourth of a thousandth, you know, two-tenths. This one about the same, almost no, no movement. Oh, you know, I dropped that, I didn't. Yeah, about two thousandths. So I would have expected uh, that on that one because how slender it is right here. Number four. Amazingly rigid. It didn't register at all. But of course it's the shortest one, but who knows. Alright, number five. Moved about two thousandths. Number six. A couple tenths of a thousandth, possibly. And over here, on number seven, A tenth or two. I would call number three the only one that had any real appreciative amount of movement. Let's do it again with 500 grams. I understand leverage and I do know that in some cases here I'm putting the weight just on the dial and sometimes as I was out here more on the stem that probably makes a difference. 500 grams on one. Half a thousandth on two. One thousandth on three. I expect a lot. Wow, four or five thousandths. Number four, about three thousandths. Five, two and a half thousandths. Six, one 
one thousandth or less and seven about a half a thousandth. I've doubled the weight again. This is a kilogram which is about 2.2 .2 pounds. By the way, I'm totally insulted when people say that I don't know anything about the metric system. Been working with it for 60 years, but I don't use it much in the machine shop. Boy, that... About a half or one thousandth on the Noga. That thing is rigid, isn't it? Number two, two and a half thousandths. Number three, I expect this to move a lot. Oh, shoot, eighteen thousandths. This one's overpowered here, I almost can't see it. Nine or ten thousandths. And five. Ten thousandths. Six. All right, now it's it's falling. The whole thing is sinking. And that's over two pounds. All right, number seven. Two thousandths, maybe two and a half. The shorter and stiffer that the indicator holder is, the better. Of course, here's a mighty mag, and there's really no place for it to go. So I'll, I'll just show you that here. I think we could, I could sit on there with my entire body weight, and that thing wouldn't move. Of course, you know, I couldn't just quit right there. Anyone still with me? Well... That was a weight directly down. Now I'm going to pull out a little bit. You know, I had a whole box of those little pulleys, single pulleys, double pulleys, triple pulleys that they use in a science class. I could not find them. I probably threw them out. I wasted an hour. So <laughs> I got to switch to roller chain. I did have some of that. So I'm going to hook the roller chain, and that's the 200 gram weight. Very crude with a little piece of brass wire there and a little piece of brass wire there. No good place to hang on to other than this little knurled knob right here. So I'm going to run through that real quickly. 200 grams on the number one Noga, no movement. Number two, about a half thousandth. You're just going to have to trust me on that. I had to totally re-rig number three, but it's four thousandths. Number six, the flex bar, one thousandth. And number seven, one thousandths. I know I'm overdoing it. We got a kilogram, and I'm not going to show all of this, but, and that's a lot of weight. On number one, the Noga, it's five thousandths, and I'm going to just go through this and write them down and get back to you in a minute. That's five thousandths. We would expect all of them to move fairly uh, significantly with a thousand grams, wouldn't we? I sure do. On the final round, five thousandths, five thousandths, twenty-five thousandths. This one just plain moved on me. I guess I'm not surprised at all. The joints slipped. Nine thousandths, ten thousandths, and twenty-two thousandths. I'm kind of surprised that that last one moved like that. Now we got different results with different weights, but I'm declaring that number one and number two we're about equal. That's the Noga and the Central. I think that the Noga is incredibly well built, but remember that's the middle size. I think this one is still a very, very good type of indicator because there's really no joints on it to speak of. Here we have one, two, three joints. Here we have one, and I don't even call this a joint, really one joint, and a rather 
thick, that's half inch, that's three eighths materials. So, and very good magnets. All of the magnets are about the same. I didn't think this was a good magnet. This one not particularly good simply because it's so tiny. Now, go ahead and put in the comments what you think you thought were the best ones. If you're interested in this, if anybody's still watching, it turned out to be a mighty long video, but I had a heck of a lot of fun making this one, even though I spent six hours making it is what it took. So continue to watch my videos. Hope I'm touching a spot here, a nerve with you on uh, a few things that you might be interested in. We all use indicators, don't we? Be sure and make the sure that the surface is clean and that there's no chips on the bottom of the magnets when you adhere them to your machine. Try to get them on a spot on the machine that is not rounded, that is, you know, as flat as possible, minimum paint and all of that if you want it to be rigid. But we, we always know that if we bump them while we're working, you know, they're all going to move. Boy, that Noga doesn't move much though, does it? And they might move more in one direction than the other, and that's why I put both a downward force on them and I pulled on them, just to see if there was much difference. And at some point, you know, you could see that the joints just couldn't take it anymore with a full kilogram. So again, Tubalcane saying so long for now. I hope you liked the video. Be sure and watch my other videos. I'll see you, or you'll see me, in the next one.